Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. A lot of people like to create organic foam for their 3D model. Today, I would like to show you how to use the Rhino 7 SubD tool to create this really organic sting ray for your jewelry design. Are you ready? Let's get started. If you take a look on this ghost view, you're going to notice that the stingray is actually really simple sub D foam. And then we can offset them into a thickness, then we'll get this shape. So that's starting from the scratch. So I'm going to come in into my top view and under my sub D tab, I will have this sub D tool called create sub D plane. And we are going to set it up for X count for five and Y count for five, and I'm going to simply to click something like this. So this is a sub D plane that we have here, and it is five on the X and five on the Y axis. So to creating the shape, uh, first of all, I would like to have this guy to be tapered. So we're gonna come into the command for taper, and we're gonna snapping into the midpoint here, midpoint here, and I want them to taper something look like this. And maybe you want to pick up those points to get them even more pointed. On the top, I might need to start it individual to adding this point to make them look like it's more vivid. I believe this should go in a little bit. This sh should go in a little bit or something look like this. Those need to come into more of the point. Those those few in the middle may want to come out a little bit like this. All right, so it's it's more rounded on the edges. So we want to get some basic form like this, right? You can always turn on your box mode by hitting the tab key and try to take a look and see if that makes sense. Otherwise, a lot of time they will be like a falling into each other. Box mode is just getting easier to see. All right, so then we have something look like this. I want to move everything on my right side for something look like this. And then let's go ahead to having this going to the other side. So the way I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the reflect and I'm going to pick up the sub D. And we want to using the Y axis and to mirror to the other side. As you can see, now I have both of them. If I do any change on here, so let's say I wanted to end to be like a turning and coming up like this, like rest of it will, I mean the, the one on the left side will follow it. So let's say I wanted to wing to be flare up like this and maybe a little bit more make it look like uh, it's flying, something, something going in and something coming up. So I like that. All right, the next thing is we need to start making the tail. So I'm going to pick up the edge right here and I'm just going to extrude it once, going to pick it up again, extrude it twice, and I'm just going to continue to pick it up, extrude it three times, extrude it four times. And then again, we wanted this to be tapered, right? So I'm going to move it in, something like that, something like that. Right. And it's hard to see where the um, the four corner is. And sometimes I will tap it and you can see that this one is supposed to be coming in as well. So I want the tail that's coming uh, tapered. So I'm going to pick up this one and extrude it one more time or make it a bit longer. All right, so that's the, the stain ray. Also on the top, we have something. And I may want to move this one to the center a little bit. And I want to also to creating another line. So I want to insert something right here. That give me another H right here. For this H right here, let's go ahead to extrude it once, extrude it twice, extrude it three times. And this is going to be, if we toggle it back, it's going to look something like that. And we can simply just make this one smaller. And I like it to be more of this shape and this guy coming out a little bit, something like this. All right, that looked something correct. All right, once you like it and then you get the basic shape, or maybe this need to be more pointed. I'm not proportionally correct, but 
we try to get it close. All right, once you have it, basic form is correct. Let's go ahead to remove the symmetry by right click and pick up this piece. And then you can see that darker side is gone. So anything that you continue to move it here, it won't follow to the other side. If you wanted to make them now, you can come in into the bottom right here. So for example, I want to tell to be rotated coming over here, this guy to be rotated and coming over here, this one to be here, this one rotated. Uh, you can start tweaking so they, they don't have to be exactly the same, right? So maybe that is that. And maybe you want to tweak it more, say this tail, I want them actually to be bended, like bend it up a little bit and whole body right there need to be bended up a little bit, kind of giving a little bit more dimension there. So I'm going to stop here um, and just going to leave the that tweaking part for you. Okay. So once you like this shape, to turn them into the solid, you're going to pick up the whole sub D and then you want to offset it, the sub D to give it a little bit thickness, right? So I'm going to offset um, the other side and this turn I'm just going to keep it like uh, 1.5 and then solid equal yes, and then we'll get something like this, right? You're going to see that this is like really harsh edges, as you can see on my render view, and it doesn't look too good, right? And then so what we wanted to do is we wanted to use this commands called remove sub decrease, and we're gonna pick up the whole thing and hit enter. And you're going to see that first sub D that we didn't delete it, so I'm just go ahead to hide it. And you can see we got something like this. Right, and you give you the overall the same thickness. Now this is the time then you can continue to edit, saying maybe I want this to be smaller, and I wanted to making extra piece, or you just wanted to make it taller, so you can pick up those and just make them a bit taller. So you kind of giving different thickness, and you can continue to edit until you know the way that you like it. Maybe you do not want them to flying the same so maybe I wanted to just move it back something like one size lower one size higher one size bigger smaller up to you all right so I also wanted to show you how to make uh, this part right here in this part right here I need to punch in a hole and the way that I punch in the hole first of all we need to make them thicker Right, so let's pick up this one and pick up this one. And in fact, I'm going to pick up all four of them and just make one D scale. So on the top view, it doesn't see much of a changing, but on the side view, it does get thicker. So I'm going to pick up this one and also this one right here. And I'm going to use the commands called insect. And what it does is it will create a sub D faces right in the middle. It's more like extruded, but not moving anywhere, right? While I'm having this two selected, I want to bridge them so they will become a hole. You bridge from one side to the other side, and I want to create a segment to be two. So now is I have this curve right in the middle. I can make them a little bit smaller so that will make the rest of a little bit thicker. All right, and then you can continue to tweak it until you find a proper hole size that you want for the steam ray. After that, for the rendering purpose, you can put the chain through. I have a lot of video talking about making different kind of a chain. If you'd like to know more about how to use a Rhino 7 sub D tool to create more organic design for your jewelry, check out my online sub D course. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.